How can countries adapt and protect their agriculture sectors? What is the roadmap for adapting agriculture sectors to climate change? Hello, my name is Amina Ahmed, and these are some of the questions you and I will together answer in this online course. We will learn from experts and practitioners from around the world about what National Adaptation Plan, or RENAP, is, and how can agriculture be integrated into it. This is a complex but vital challenge, especially for developing countries like India, where I'm from. I hope this course inspires you to join this global community to learn, share and take action. So, welcome to week one. Imagine yourself facing a river with a high tide and strong currents. Let's call this river climate change. In this river are a few islands where you can stop for rest and refuge, after which you must continue forward. These islands are the NAP elements, the steps and activities of the adaptation process. Now the boat you are in is called NAP, and you have very high hopes that this boat will help you traverse these changing temperamental waters. Think of this online course as the wind to your sail, which guides you in steering your nap through the rough tides. We hope that the nap proves to be sturdy enough to carry you through the strong currents of climate change as you stop on the islands and explore the nap elements. Before we enter the river, let's gauge its depth. We will begin by exploring the links between climate change, agriculture and food security and highlight the need to plan for climate change adaptation. We will then introduce the main international frameworks and the process of formulating and implementing national adaptation plans. So you will get an idea of how the world is coming up with a course of action to tackle the issues emerging from this nexus. Because agriculture is a key economic sector in many countries and a source of livelihoods for most vulnerable communities, it is critical for achieving sustainable development. Did you know that in 2010, as much as 40% of the economically active population worldwide was engaged in crop and livestock production? The proportion is much higher in developing countries. For example, in Zambia, where agriculture contributes to almost 10% of the country's GDP, around 70% of the rural population gets their livelihoods from agriculture. And yet, agriculture is so sensitive to climate change. This is why IPCC considers climate change a fundamental threat to global food security and a significant hunger risk multiplier. Rising temperatures, erratic precipitation, sea level rise, are already affecting food security. And these impacts are expected to become stronger. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to get a little more specific about food security. Where did this concept come from? And why is it important we talk about it? The definition of food security was coined at the World Food Summit in 1996. That was more than 20 years ago. It states that food security exists when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe, nutritious food that meets their dietary needs and food preferences for an active and healthy life. This leads to four dimensions of food security. Availability, access, utilization and stability of food. When all four dimensions are stable, we can say a community is food secure. Climate change can destabilize all four of these dimensions. For example, decline in yields will reduce availability of food. Projected increase in food prices will decrease the purchasing power and food access of consumers. Higher incidence of foodborne diseases will reduce food safety and utilization. It is estimated that with climate change, the population living in poverty could increase by up to 122 million by 2030 relative to a future without climate change. This is largely due to its negative impacts on the incomes in the agriculture sector. Another possible development could be 
Because climate change impacts high and low latitude regions differently, it is likely that existing inequalities between the developed and the developing world will be exacerbated. Do you want to know how climate change will affect food security and agriculture in your region? Pause the video and take a minute to explore this table. As you can see, all the regions of the world will be affected, but the degree and kind of impacts will vary. Essentially, risks result from the interaction between hazard, exposure and vulnerability. Hazard is, say, a weather event, a snow blizzard, flood. And exposure is the system that is exposed to it or can be affected by it. In our discussion, the agriculture system. Now, vulnerability of the agriculture system is then determined by the degree to which agriculture is susceptible to and unable to cope with adverse effects of climate change. Most of the time, it is the world's poorest people and countries that are most vulnerable. Many of the poorest are smallholder producers such as farmers, or herders, fishers, forest-dependent communities. Um, women and indigenous people are also highly vulnerable. Let's take the example of women farmers. While women can be positive agents of change, it has been shown that women farmers have lower farm productivity compared to male farmers. Now, this can be because they have fewer entitlements, less access to information and services, and that they are less mobile. These are the same reasons that make women more vulnerable to climate change. It is clear that changes in the climate affect genders differently, magnifying existing gender inequality. It's never been easy for women and climate change makes it worse. The main point here is that impacts of climate change on agriculture increase vulnerability in general, which can lead to significant setbacks in development. This is why it is essential that we adapt to climate change if we want to achieve sustainable development. In the next video, we will talk about the international agreements, the United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change, the Paris Agreement, the 2030 Development Agenda, and the Sendai Framework. We will look at how they set pathways towards sustainable development and climate change adaptation. Don't forget to take a look at the lecture notes for more information and key definitions on each of the concepts we mentioned. See you in the next video.